Hi, I'm Larimar. In this video, I would like to share how to start living your dreams. And I want to share how I was able to start my own business. So I'm just going to go straight to the point. There are three things I want to share. First, you need to know what you love. And it is okay if what you love keeps changing because as you gain life experience, your perspective keeps changing. Therefore, your preference can change. And you need to listen to your inner voice, not your parents or children or children, friends. Well, of course, children. <laughs> um, you need to weigh more on your inner voice than any other voice. You can factor in other people's opinions if you resonate with it. However, honor your inner voice, inner self, inner child, whatever you call it. It's important not to ignore your inner voice because that is what your souls desire. And second, you need to act upon what you love. And again, if you haven't found what you really love, it is okay. You can just explore around what you like, what you're interested in, what you're curious about. You know, sometimes the word love or passion, enthusiasm would be big words, but it really depends on your definition. So, so even mere interest, curiosity or relief, contentment, in the broader sense, those are all parts of passion. So keep pursuing what you love, what you like, what you feel interested. And instead of just thinking about it, just take a baby step. Because when you act upon what you like, the momentum is going to be built up. We are living in the physical reality. We are physical being. We have a physical body. Therefore, our action is the language. When you want something, but you act upon something else, then this shows that there is a conflicting beliefs going on because your action and your desire are not matching. This is when inner conflict is created. And when you keep doing this over and over again, this inner conflict is going to manifest in external way and that's how a lot of people experience conflicts in life and of course i've been into this position and i'm in the process of getting out of this matrix by rewiring my perspective and solely investing and solely investing in what i love what i'm passionate about what i find joyful you know just keep thinking what you love that is the third thing just keep thinking what makes you feel uplifted, what brings you joy. The single most important thing that you need to develop in order to have a happy, fulfilled lifestyle is to change how you feel. It's not, it's not about changing the external circumstances. That is the secondary steps. And you don't need to figure out everything. But just focus on what you can change first. Note that some people may not agree with you, may not agree with your opinions or your behaviors, and you need to be okay with it. Because one, they have their own will to judge something, and so do you. Two, it's far more important to please yourself than others. You need to be selfish. Being selfish means you honor yourself. You do something for yourself. You become more true of who you are, becoming more selfish. I'm aware that this word has negative connotation. However, you need to think different. You need to think different. Instead of pleasing others, please start pleasing yourself. And when you think of what you love enough, this momentum is going to help you 
move forward by taking actions. And when you keep doing it, nothing can stop you. But when you are being wishy-washy and, and easily being swayed by others, actually it is allowing yourself to be swayed by others because you always have a choice. It's not other people who dictates your life or who has control over your behaviors. Even if it may seem like to it, sometimes you always have a choice how to look at things and how to react to certain situations. You can become more creative. However, when you're energetically out of balance, in other words, when you are feeling not good enough or feeling not good about yourself or your life situations, then it is just impossible to even come up with a good idea that can possibly bring you breakthroughs because you are not vibrationally matched to that idea. You can think of how some people who have depression cannot think of positive stuff. It could be so far-fetched for those people because they are in a in an emotional spectrum, they are in the lower level. There may be a huge gap. When you talk to them about happy, rosy stuffs. And this can actually reinforce the negative state of being that they are in because they can see this as a evidence that they cannot be happy. Hopefully this makes sense. So yeah, and you can think of your own experience. When you're really mad at something or mad at someone, at that particular moment, it is very challenging for you to even think of a happy memory because you are not vibrationally matched to that memory. In other words, in another example, when you are feeling so good about yourself and you just love the beautiful weather like today in California, you would be so happy, uplifted, and you would believe that you can do everything. This is the power of emotion. And in order to change the state of your emotion, it costs nothing. It just takes your intention. It actually takes your mental attention. It doesn't cost a penny. You can just sit in your living room or in the bedroom and start thinking differently. No, this universe is mental. According to hermetic principle, everything is mental. The entire universe is mental. Your thinking, your thoughts creates your reality. And I've done this experiment. When I wake up in the morning, or sometimes I wake up at night, I have an intention. I set, on, I set out an intention that I'm going to have so much fun today. I am not sure what I'm going to experience this day, but I am going to have a lot of fun today. And that's actually my personal matrix of success, having fun. In the past, I've been very ambitious. I guess I still am. I think that is part of my being. But in the past, I was uh, being more ambitious about certain titles or accomplishments or meeting some social expectation standards of some sort. Because of that ambition, I was able to achieve quite a lot of things. However, compared to the amount of efforts that I put in, I was not getting enough of emotional fulfillment. And I tried to dig deep into myself, what is the reason? And I realized that that is because I set the matrix of success in the wrong way. It's not about the accomplishment, external accomplishments. Especially this advice would be more relevant for those who have a strong emphasis in the fourth house or cancer in astrological birth chart. But this can apply to everyone. When you define your success as an emotional state of being, you can have a far more control over what is happening in your life because you can simply have control over your emotional reactions. 
you need to realize that it is your domain. It's not that other person or other situation can trigger you. It is actually what you allow. By the way, I honor, I completely honor all spectrum of emotion, even depression, being powerlessness, anger, and hopelessness. All these emotions are equally valuable as joy, love, compassion, and fun, or excitement. Because these negative emotions are giving you important clues about your situation. It shows that what you don't like, what you don't prefer, and that means that there is something else that you prefer. So that is your job to find out what is it that you prefer. The stronger negative emotion you have means that there is something that can give you stronger positive emotions. It's like action reaction. It's a physical. Phenomenon, but an emotional setting. And in regards to this particular technique, I got a lot of help from Abram Hicks. I've been following her for for quite a long time, and lately it really clicked to me. For those of you who don't know Abram Hicks, I highly recommend you watch her contents because that is very inspiring. So. Yeah, so that's what I did. That's what I did. First, I first I figured out what I like, what I love doing, and second, I started taking action. Yes, I made a decision, and then I keep I kept pursuing it. And the third, positive self talk. I guess that was the most challenging part. That. I couldn't get for many years, even after I changed the course of direction of my life. Yeah, but self-talk is so important, and sometimes you need to really dive deep into yourself because we get influenced by parents, friends, people around us, and A lot of times, they independently have a different opinions about different things. Not necessarily they are perfectly matched with your desire, your visions, and your path. And it is your job to find out what you truly resonate with. So that's why you need to learn about yourself, increase your self awareness. Personally, I found astrology, MBTI person. MBTI personality test and and lots of different tools help me understand who I am. So at the end of the day, who evaluates your life? It is you. It's not other people. It's not other people. If you are longing for public recognition, go for it. But it's important that what you do is. Well aligned with your desire. I mean that I wouldn't recommend you doing something for the sake of validation of others when you are actually when you actually don't like doing that stuff. But if you like something and you wanna get recognized and get validated, get respect from others, go for it. Your emotion always tells you. How to live your life? Just do what makes you feel uplifted, and just follow joy. On the path of joy, you can never be out of joy. On the path of joy, you can never be unhappy. But it is okay if you sometimes drift away from the right track because you can always get back on track, and that I think is a part of the fun of our life. So hopefully. This is helpful for you, and feel free to share your feedback. Hope you have a wonderful day. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.